Okay, so not sure that we're gonna have any more luck this video. Uh, the other video uh, recorded, and uh, hopefully Facebook's gonna uh, upload it in a, in a little bit. Uh, so I apologize again. There's issues. Um, it uh, wasn't so bad at our 10.30 streaming, but what are you going to do? Okay, uh, so um, I'm just going to blaze on here and um, continue and post this later. Okay, so I was po pointing out this uh, uh, live oak tree here. Um, tons of moss covering it. You'll notice tons of moss covering our rocks as well um, and pretty much all of the oak trees so uh, yeah really all of these trunks you're seeing around me are oak trees just covered in the moss um, a lot of um, you know fog and stuff up here which is is perfect for that um, and they latch it just latches right on starts growing right out of uh, the sandstone and really like the oaks um, these are the right there, and a couple other little uh, visual aids I wanted to show you. So here, acorns, okay, acorns in various stages of day here. Um, this one got like half eaten or something, rotten, eaten, something ate the bit out of it, squirrel, something like that. Um, so we've got a couple of acorns here, and then we've got the uh, hats of other acorns. So it looks like those full acorns. That one probably came off uh, one of these uh, one of these trees around here, possibly further up in the canopy. And so those are the oak trees. Um, we've got, like I said, also black oak, uh, tan oak, black oak and tan oak. Apparently, were the best acorns uh, for gathering. Uh, if you're if you're trying to eat acorns, um, you gotta process them, leach them to get the tannins out, but the tan oak acorns, um, like these, um, well, no, not like these, these are probably valley oaks, but uh, the uh, tan oak and black oak acorns are apparently the best, require the least leaching to get the tannic acids out so that you can then start grinding and processing and, and cooking them. 
Um, so we've got a lot of those. And, and our black oaks here in the Santa Cruz Mountains are really, um, as far as I know, the only known patch here in the Santa Cruz Mountains of black oak. Um, so it would have been a real advantage for you know, the Achistaka people um, whose, tribe, whose tribal lands we're on right now, um, you know, for them to, to gather and harvest. And that would have been a couple weeks. Uh, acorn harvesting um, was, uh, you know, big event for, for the different tribes and villages. They'd come and relocate up, you know, where the good acorns were um, and stay up there until they could basically, you know, you know, harvesting in the day, partying it. They got as much as they could, uh, they could really carry back. And that was a huge staple for them. So very important trees, the oak trees around here. Okay, let's pick another tree. Uh, oh, there we go. Hey, that's a good one. Um, and I got another one of those right behind me here. Um, let's see. Looks like the connection's doing a little bit better, but I think we've lost most of our live people. Um, but any uh, viewers later at home, if you want to uh, feel smart before I say what kind of tree it is, you have a guess? Uh, this one's actually got a uh, person's name. This is a Doug or Douglas fir. Um, let's uh, come back over. needles okay so this is another doug fir somewhat smaller um and then these two little guys right here too um, okay now remember i said the best way to identify most trees is by their leaves or their needles that's what we're seeing here so douglas fir might be familiar to some of you folks um December time likes to bring trees inside their house for any particular reason. Oftentimes, it is a Doug fir. Oftentimes. And you can see that these needles here, now these are small to maybe hang ornaments off of. Um, so you do want to get them kind of growing a lot, a lot bushier at the uh, Christmas tree farms. Um, but they are often Douglas fir. So, yeah, this one's probably a little too tall for the living room, huh? You know, it's not that. Still relatively young. Now, Douglas firs are pretty interesting trees. Um, uh, their needles do have a high vitamin C content. So, uh, once again, of course, can't harvest anything in state parks where all the wildlife is protected. Um, and should never harvest anything without number one being a hundred percent certain you know exactly what it is and of who's ever goes on um, but uh, that is uh, that is one use for those uh, high vitamin C content so um, uh, that's one thing I believe uh, different California Indians would use uh, especially in the spring to kind of get their immunities back up um, the Doug fir is one of the few trees that actually grows as tall as the redwoods, uh, or almost. Uh, they tap out at about 270 feet, uh, whereas redwoods, you know, especially in more northern California, can get much taller, 100 feet taller. The tallest redwood or any tree in the world is 380 feet. Uh, but the redwoods we get down here at the southern end of their range uh, are typically shorter, and here in the same 330, 340. Those are the only that are in height and size to them. Um, they also fast at growing. But um, if you see here before me, there is a dugger, which is damage. There's a lot of holes in there that for woodpeckers possibly uh you know and don't tend to live nearly as long as they can for you know two thousand plus years
best. The madrone tree branches and encouraging growth is sunny. Even allow longer getting sun to die drop off. Um, you know, saving resources and energy for the rest of the tree, so the rest of the tree can survive. So the Salish people saw the, the it as the tree of wisdom, and even believed that uh, its its many roots were holding together the shattered people. Um, and I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit on uh, some of the, the paper bark. The bark is really small, really sheds very easily, especially after you know it's wet and starts to warm up again. Um, it sheds very quickly, and in, in the late summer, the paper underneath will shed in huge, giant scrolls. Um, the prevailing scientific theory about this is that that helps um, shed parasites and lichen, other things that are kind of, you know, Maybe adding a little bit of a, a burden onto the tree's growth. And you'll notice, if you look, that madrone tree is completely clear. And every other tree around is covered in stuff. Um, once again, you know, our oak tree covered in moss. Um, the dug fir, not so much, but you see those light patches. That is actually uh, lichen. Um, essentially, you know, um, algae mixed with fungus. Um, so it's it's sort of similar to moss, except that um, moss is actually a plant with a root structure, um, and lichen is a, again a, a mix of algae and fungus. Uh, the fungus being the giving it the structure. Uh, so people often confuse the greener, softer lichen with uh, moss, but they are different. Uh, so you see, you know, the oaks covered in moss, dug for covered in lichen, madrone tree. Nice and clear. It's mostly. Let me give you a little bit of a zoom in because. So, a madrone leaf and a piece of paper. Now, that paper is um, right between the bark and the skin of the tree. Um, so, that's the, that's the, that's the part that um, uh, native peoples would make teas. Is the uh, pretty fresh, they're still green and glossy. They get even wider than that. And they turn. about um, the settlement, pioneers, um, you know, industry coming in the area. And so here we see a lot of uh, old mills. Uh, logging was, you know, part of, of life here, especially, you know, it, it would get even more ramped up um, 
um, you know, after you know earthquakes, fires, that kind of things are more needed. Um, so the you do some of the museums, even just like the local pizza place, Creek, you can find of that. you treat them correctly of course growth back you need to let